What's up YouTube? It's Coach Corey and today we got a strategy video for you all. I wanted to do a map breakdown of Bonebox. I want to talk about my best tips for Bonebox, the best team compositions, how to play each role in Bonebox, and all other sorts of stuff. So let's get right into it. Oh, and guys, I'm trying out a new format for today's video. Instead of having the strategy up over the gameplay, I'm having the strategy up on the overlay and then it's having gameplay up. So let me know if you guys would prefer to have the strategy uh, even bigger instead of the gameplay and then have gameplay later on or if you prefer this format. Just let me know in the comments. Okay, so starting out, let's talk about the pathing of your teammates in the beginning. Now in Bonebox, you're generally going to want to have your teammates split up into three ways. One on the left, one on the middle, and one on the right. Now, if you're playing lower trophy games or you're playing with randoms, you might often see two or maybe even three people go down the middle into the box. And the reason this really isn't recommended is those box entryways are just so narrow, it's very easy to change shots and hit multiple people at once. It's honestly not that hard. And then you can charge up supers and you can quickly get an advantage. But on top of that, on Bonebox, there's a good amount of grasses, so it's pretty easy to sneak around and surprise people. So you have to be very careful to stop flanking, and that's one of the reasons you want to have one person on each of the sides to not only establish control of those sides, but to make sure no enemies are going behind you and surprising your gem carrier. So that's why you want to have one person on each side of the map. So in general, you're going to want to have, of course, one gem carrier, and then one or two support carriers and zero or one aggro characters. You don't have to have an aggro character on this map, but they are certainly strong, so it's up to you. And I'll talk about exactly team comps that I would suggest later on, but first I'm gonna go over the roles. So first off, let's start out with the gem carrier role. So for gem carriers, I'm only gonna recommend Pam, Poco, Bo, and Crow on this map. Crow is actually a good gem carrier on this map. He's good at chipping away at people and he can jump away when he needs to. But those are the people I'd recommend as gem carriers for Bonebox. Now as gem carrier, you're going to be going down to the middle. And depending on how many, how many enemy brawlers are across from you is going to depend on where you shoot, maybe. Now, if there's two or more people down the middle, you're going to only want to shoot those people and focus on them. And make sure not to be too aggressive and don't go too far up to grab gems if they do have two people as you could easily take too much damage while you're waiting for your teammate to come over on whatever side doesn't have an enemy brawler. But if there's only one enemy brawler across from you, uh, most gem carriers don't do a lot of damage. So in a gem carrier on gem carrier battle, it typically can take a while for one of them to die. So you might consider shooting across on one of the sides and helping out your teammates. Now, whichever side can get a kill first in Smash to Grab is generally going to be able to establish control of the map early on. So if you can help one of your teammates kill whoever's across from them, it's definitely going to help you establish control of the map. And that's going to happen a lot sooner if you're helping out your teammate than you focusing on the gem carrier across from you. Now, the other thing on Bonebox, as I was talking about earlier, is it's really easy to get flanked and people can sneak up on the bushes. So as a gem carrier, you definitely have to be aware of this and you have to be very careful of enemy aggros behind you in the bushes. So if one of your teammates dies, this is where the possibility really happens where an enemy can start flanking you and get behind you in the bushes. So as a gem carrier, you might want to try and check the bushes every once in a while to see if there's an enemy either flanking on one of the sides or if it's late enough flanked already behind you. So you definitely don't want to have a situation happen where you have 7 or 8 gems or even 9 or 10 and you're walking back to your spawn but there's an enemy aggro waiting in the bushes for you and they 2 or 3 shot you and then they run back with their super and all the way back closer to their spawn and then you may have been downing the whole game but all of a sudden one flank killed you and lost you the game. So you have to be very careful as a gem carrier on bone box to check the bushes and make sure you didn't get flanked and if you do you have to try and get one of your teammates to help you push them out make them aware keep shooting in that direction and hopefully they're going to come over and help you out and clear out that side of the map so you can get back to your spawn when you need to now since pam is arguably the best gem carrier on bone box and really on every smash and grab map right now 
I want to go over her turret placements very briefly. Now, there's about six different positions you can put them in. The red, the blue, and the green dots. Now, you're probably almost never going to do the red dots. That's when you're being really aggressive. You're dominating the enemy, and you're going to place them there to help you and your aggro out. Keep the enemy in their spawn. You're probably not going to do this that often as you might end up losing control and not having your turret for later on on the game. It might take you a little bit to get your turret back. So I might recommend the blue or green placements. Now, if the enemy team has a ricochet, you're going to want to do the blue placements. If they don't have a ricochet, though, I might recommend the green, depending on how much control you have of the middle. If you have a good amount of control of the middle of the map, you can do the blue placements. But if you don't, I would definitely do the green ones. And in general, you're going to want to place it on whichever side of the map you think needs more help. But it's generally going to be for you and a support character a support character as opposed to you and an aggro as the aggro is not really going to be able to benefit from the turret as much as a support character. All right, so let's go over the aggro brawlers and how you want to act as an aggro on Bonebox. So the characters that are going to play the aggro role is going to be Bull, El Primo, Shelly, Mortis, Tara, Nita. Uh, I think that's all of them. Yeah. So those are going to be the characters that are going to play the aggro role. Now, as an aggro, you're going to want to focus on flanking the enemy and just getting kills. You're never going to want to pick up any gems. You're just going to focus on staying in the bushes, flanking the enemy. And if you're a bull or El Primo, you can consider supering into them. As a bull, you have really good supers on this map as you can super into the side very easily. As you can control where you're going to land more than normal as once you hit the side of the map, you stop right away and then you can start shooting. So bull is going to be my best option on this map as an aggro. As with this many bushes, shotgun characters are very strong as people are often hidden. So you're able to get in in close range more often than normal. So Bull is very strong. Shelly is very strong. But El Primo is a really good option as well, as well as Daryl. Now, as an aggro, where you go is going to depend a little bit on how the enemy acts. But in general, you're going to go on one of the side, whatever side you spawn on generally, and you're going to be going in the grass. Now, there's two options you can do. You can keep going as fast up the map as you can and just try and stay hidden in the grass and surprise whatever enemy is waiting for you um, across the map. Or as an aggro, if you think it's possible that the enemy has a support character on the other side and is going to be shooting down that lane and make it hard for you to approach, you can wait closer to your spawn um, behind the wall a little bit. You can wait there and think that they might stop shooting and then you can come up and surprise them. This is definitely a not bad tactic as a lot of times people do expect aggros to be there and they might just start shooting down that lane, but not always. So it's up to you and you might have to play it by the situation and see what happens. Now, once you reach about the middle of the map, you have to make a decision as to whether you want to keep going up the map or go in the box and help your gem carrier. Now, if they have two enemies inside the box, that's really gonna be when you go inside the box to help your gem carrier. If there was someone on your side and you were able to kill them, I would recommend going, continuing up the map and establishing a position to help spawn trap. And you really only wanna go in the middle if you're gonna help your gem carrier establish control and make it so they're not getting overwhelmed. So if you're going in the middle, you're gonna to wanna to be going and helping out your gem carrier. And then once that's done, if you don't think you can get back outside safely and get into a spawn trap position, just establish a position behind some of those walls and wait for an enemy to come in. And that's when you're gonna deal most of your damage. Now, if they have a thrower, you're of course gonna to have to be pushed back some and you're gonna to have to be a little more sneaky then. But if not, you can mostly just camp behind those walls and wait for enemies to come in and then you can take them out, or you might be able to super towards the enemy, depending on what brawler you're using. So if you're taking the spawn trap approach, you're gonna continue up the map and get behind that wall outside of the box close to the enemy spawn, and you're just gonna be going and chipping at enemies going towards the box and just going back and forth between there and the other side of the wall, depending on how the enemy is acting. The enemy might expect you to be there, so you might have to go in that little square bush on the far upper left 
to hide away from the enemy and you're really just trying to hide and wait for the enemy and surprise them. That's the main thing is aggro is going to do is try and surprise the enemy and get quick and easy kills and then they can use their super to either get close to an enemy or once they die they can use their super to get back in on the action right away. Okay now let's go over the last role support. Now you can actually have two support characters on this map as as long as there's one on each side of the map, you can still have a good amount of controls. You can shoot down those lanes and use your range to your advantage to make it hard for aggro to approach you. Now, if you do have two supports, you're going to want to have ones that deal a good amount of damage. You're going to need at least a Colt or a Ricochet, but we'll get into team comp a little bit more later. But as far as how you want to act, you're going to be, of course, going down whatever side you're closer to when you spawn. So if you have a Ricochet or a Brock, instead of going straight away to the side, you can go up towards the map, fire once, make the enemy gem carrier think that someone might be going middle, and then you can go down the side. Now, once you're on the side of the map as a support character, your first priority is going to be making sure that there's no one across from you, or if there is, that you take care of them and push them back before you start targeting the middle. So if there's an aggro, you have to be very careful and make sure that no aggro gets up close to you and kills you because if they do then they're gonna be able to flank your gem carrier and it's gonna be a lot harder to push them out and keep them away so your first priority is making sure there's no aggro across from you and then it's making sure there's no support character across from you on your side once that's done then you can consider shooting towards the middle and helping out your your gem carrier if there's no one on your side of the map you're definitely going to want to start doing that as soon as possible. Now, if you do kill the person on your side of the map, you can consider shooting down the middle, or you can go even further up the map and get in a more spawn trap position and get on the outside of the box and shoot down that lane and make it hard for anyone to get closer in the middle. But enemies can actually sort of bypass this. They can keep running past you, and they can get towards the middle even if you're doing that. Okay, now I really quick want to cover the position placements for Jesse's turret if you're using a Jesse. Now, if you're using a Jesse, it's really simple for the most part. You're just going to place your turret inside the box in one of the corners. If they have a thrower, make sure you're placing it on your side of the spawn. If they don't and you have control of the middle, you can place it on their side of the spawn inside of the box. This is going to be a better placement as it's harder to shoot. But if you don't have control of the middle, they can kill it pretty easily. And that's when you might want to do it on the inside. And you can use that to help establish control of the middle. Okay, now let's talk about suggested brawlers and the best team comps for Bonebox. So in my opinion, the best gem carries for Bonebox is going to be Pam. Is definitely my number one. And then it's going to be Poco or Crow. And then for the best aggro characters, my best one is going to be Bull. But then it's going to be Daryl, El Primo, and Shelly. Those are going to be the ones I would recommend. I wouldn't really recommend Mortis as Mortis dies too easily on this map. But there's a lot of shotgun characters. Nita and Tar are not bad, but they don't deal as much damage. And in this much flanking of a map, you really want guys who can deal damage fast at close quarters. As far as the support, my best recommendation is a Ricochet. As he deals a ton of damage and there's a lot of bounce shots on this map for him. A Colt is also really good, but a Spike is pretty good as well, as well as a Jesse. A Brock isn't bad, but I would recommend those four first. If you have a Spike, make sure you're focusing on the enemy aggro, as he's really going to be able to stop them well with his super. So, my best team count for Bonebox is going to be Pam, Bull, and Ricochet. If you don't have Pam, I would do Poco, or you could do Crow, but Poco is definitely a good option. Another really good team comp is Pam, Colt, and Ricochet, or Pam, Ricochet, and Spike. Those both offer a lot of damage and make it fairly easy to keep control of the sides with a Ricochet on one side and a Colt or a Spike on the other, and then Pam down the middle. And both of those are also fairly adept at attacking down the middle as well from the sides. Now guys, just because I'm not recommending a brawler doesn't mean you can't win with them and it doesn't mean you can't get big win streaks, but these are gonna be the brawlers that I would recommend the most and I think are the easiest to win with. All right guys, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will catch you later.